How is everyone doing today? I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa. I am really excited to see everybody here for the live, and I really want to say thank you for coming back for the replay. On the mic, you will hear on occasion my husband, John. Say hi, John. Hi, John. And what he does is he tries to keep up with my crazy painting speed with one of our many cameras so that you can see every part of this painting being constructed step by step. Because if you can follow all the steps, you can make the painting. And one of the things that we know and believe here is that anyone can paint. Oh, yeah. And given enough information, you can totally do this painting. This is an easy beginner painting. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about it. Guess what we have in the description? Uh... I don't know. What do you I have hid things like materials lists. We're in the description? I do that every time. In the material, down below. In there? Click, click it. You just down, click and click, click that more information yeah. <laughs> and they'll be there? Yes, it'll be there. Included in that description information, you're going to see Angela Anderson or the words Angela Looney. And if you're brand new here and you've never seen this before, a good friend of mine who paints also on YouTube, and I like to get together and do thematic painting collaborations so that everybody can have an old day of painting. So she has a painting that is a like match to this one. Like you could do both of them and hang them up in your apartment and people will be like, whoa. Yeah. It's actually pretty cool. She's going to be after at two o'clock. Cool. So that's awesome. All right. Is, I'm pumped. Is that we, a, a fall hat you're wearing? All right. I look, look at the purple versus the orange. It was just too good. Not and to everybody do. loves that. They think it's really good. <laughs> I really like it too. You may be seeing this hat for a while. You like that hat. So uh, we're going to be painting, even though this is on a gallery wrap canvas. We talked a bit about gallery wraps, and I'm like, when mm -hmm. is it a gallery wrap? When it's like this. Really. I see. But, you know, everything these days, this is also technically gallery wrap because it's stapled on the back, but you can see there's a big difference in the stretchers. I have wishes on the canvas today, John. We do. And we have some special wishes for we, for some of our communities. Yeah, we really do. One, the first one, the most important, this came in uh, earlier today, which is Mallory of Willis, Texas is missing, and we would wish that she gets home safely. Yes. So absolutely. Um, in North Carolina, there's been a storm, so it is our wish that everybody is safe and sheltered and taken care of. Um, over by our own Kim, there's been a fire. So everybody mm -hmm. in California by that fire, we're hoping that you're safe. Um, our own flame gremlin is under the weather today. So let's send her some wonderful energy for healing. My gratitude for today is that I really love my kids and they always give me good cuddles. And it's really nice to have that in my life. So that's mm -hmm. my gratitude. And then peace and kindness for the world. So those are my wishes and thoughts that I've written on the canvas with watercolor pencil. And they're going to disappear into the paint. And that's going to help bring that positive energy into the world. Are you <gasps> ready to see the materials list, John? You know, I, as soon as I say thank you to this horde of people who really? are out here. Just, okay. Over, over 240 people. 200, it's just like the numbers just keep skyrocketing. 250 people. It's just, it's. If we get to 300, you know what happens. Oh my gosh, I know. And to, that's why I'm going to remind. 300 likes. 300, you know what happens. What we doing the Sherpa dance. What we doing. So, I won't do it now, though. You don't get it now. So so don't forget to like, comment, sh subscribe, and share. But especially yeah. hit the little thumbs up button. Uh, because we, we try to hit 300 on the sh by the end of the show. And then we make the <laughs> Sherpa do a dance. So That's always fun. Make the Sherpa dance. Let's talk materials. Tell us about the materials, Sherpa. The materials are really simple today. Angela and I wanted to work from a limited palette. The spray you see on here is wet palette spray. Because it's just super hot in the studio today and mm -hmm. dry. All right. This is burnt umber. And it's going to give my black a very warm tone. Mm -hmm. This is Mars black, titanium white, ultramarine blue. And this particular uh, color is naphthol crimson. But what you want is a crimson. You want a color that's closer to blood rather than an orange. Okay. So that's what you want. Also using to help myself out is glazing medium mm -hmm. and the Grumbrocker acrylic retarder, which I really, really, really like. I like this one a lot. The golden gla uh, glazing also is very good. And then optionally, zinc white or mixing white will work. Hmm. That's an option. Now, here's the big to who about this. And this is going to be great because we're going to really be going over this very soon. Do you see these two brushes, John? I do see those brushes. Okay. So these are both rounds. They're, um, <laughs> interestingly enough, these might both be called long handles now because they've got all these new things. But I'm pretty sure this is a short handle. Here is a long handle. 
Th- these will run about a size between a 12 and an 11, mm-hmm. number 11, and they're hogs bristle for acrylic. So it's a natural fiber here, and it's very stiff. This brush is slightly more ideal for cloud making than this brush. Okay. So if you're out looking for a brush and you need it to be good for clouds, what I want you to look for is this sort of rounded brush, and I want you to really get in there and feel it, and you want it to be very stiff. Stiff. Not nice for your face. You would never put on makeup with it. And when you're comparing two brushes you think are close, always pick the shorter bristles. Why is that? Because they'll give you a stiffer, fluffier cloud. Ah, gotcha. So just a little tip. Those are really great. Any beat up, battered, ruined brush and this is, will work. And we're talking about cloud brushes here. Yeah, we're talking about cloud brushes. For not, just, not just any old brush. No, no. Specifically no. For to cloud paint brushes. in the background, we're going to use a number 10 bright. Number 10. You, is a Robert Simmons. Again, what I like in this is, is the firm filament because I use a heavy body paint. Yeah. If you don't have a heavy body paint, guess what? You don't have to worry about the firmness of the filament as much. Oh my gosh, there is almost 300 people in the room. So we're uh, getting close. There we are. Okay, now could you uh, the little dots of water that are out there? What, what, what are those? What are they from? It's a palette wedding spray. Oh, okay, that's yeah. what that's from. So just that's just what it is. It was just very hot today, and I had managed to just recently unclog my palette wedding spray. <laughs> and and so what this do does is it wets it without altering the acrylic paint. It's theoretically, what it does. Yeah. I could also just use a Mister bottle. And now you have you have a quest coming up on some clouds too. I do, and we're going to start, but just white fluffy ones. The first kind, the cumulus nimbus in summer, yeah. kind of cloud is the first one we're going to do. Now, if you had a stipple brush, that well, we'll get to that. Oh yeah, stipple, yes, stipple, deerfoot stippler, stippling brush is fantastic. You know, of course, a sponge is fantastic. Um, there's a lot of tools that get the the clouds kind of done. Yeah. That brush that's all blown out and looks like a fluffy, stiffy. Thistle, that's a fantastic cloud brush. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pull a little black over to my brown, and I'm going to say that, notice how I'm coming from the outside pulling the black? Yeah. All right, so this is this black has a lot of pigment in it, and so I'm going to be cautious and careful with it and not go crazy. If I'm having trouble getting the flow on my paint, I can add a little water. I'm going to add a smidge of white to this, <gasps> oh and my- what I can also do if I want it to really glide over my canvas is add this retarder. And then I can just paint in a horizontal back and forth brush stroke this streaky awesome sky. Well, while you're painting that streaky awesome sky in. Add a little white to the next stroke. You may as well start doing your Sherpa dance because we are Sherpa. 300 likes and 300 people? We got 300 people in the room right now. We've been pretty solid for a while. I'll give you this one. Give us Sherpa dance. Mm. <laughs> we are Sherpa. <laughs> we are Sherpa. <laughs> oh my goodness, notifications are dinging on me today. <laughs> That's so popular. <laughs> thank you guys. I have to say thank you so much. It's so much fun to have you guys out here with us and for I mean like yeah. all the comments and everyone out here. There's it lots is of wonderful. It's but w- let's real quick get into this so people aren't lost. Nope. And then we'll talk about that. Don't have two to. seconds. Only because I'm trying to get it in, babe, before it dries. You've got it. you got it. All right. So I'm going to pull out a little more black and a little more brown. See that mix on mm-hmm. the brush? Pull out a little white. And I like the blending medium. You could use glazing medium if it's what you have already. Just know that the glazing medium will dry soft. Um, I mean, not soft, quickly. And with a high gloss. And if you're trying to get this very soft, muted sky... You're going to want it to be more like oil paint, and that's where the blending medium really helps us. Ah, gotcha. I don't know if you can see up close. Yeah, we can zoom in over there. On the thing and see how nicely it blends in. It, you really can. I'm, I'm not super close up on it, but I'm pretty good on there, and you can see it just kind of... There you go. Yeah. Right? Now, I'm really keeping this initial kind of sky... Um, very smooth and foggy and blended. Another trick that I'm doing, if you see here, is I'm not rinsing my brush, John. <laughs> You're not? No. No, I'm not rinsing my brush. It's, it's, look at this. Look at this little brush just. It's just. Not rinsing itself off at all. It just gets right in that paint. Get some more paint right here. Cheekily grab some of this blending medium. <laughs> and you just put it all in there. 
<laughs> and just go. Well, it is. It just is like it's like racing across the canvas. Not all blending mediums are my favorite. Yeah. I don't. I don't love all of them. But I really love the this one. Hey, who are you? Stop it! I turn you off. Maybe that's what's wrong. <laughs> Mom's trying to get hold of me. Are you live right now? <laughs> <laughs> Don't go to my YouTube channel or nothing. <laughs> Actually, I do that to her all the time. <laughs> so she has an auto send text now on her phone. That's like I'm live. Ah. Uh -huh. Now the um, this will slow your drying time down to about thirty minutes. Hmm. Maybe 45 on some, but you don't want to over mix your paint into it. It's not for tinting or glazing. Gotcha. It has a very specific limitation on the mixture that works. And you don't have to have it to do this painting. Yeah. No, you don't because, you know, water also works. Really? Yeah. You just, okay, cool. It really does. Do you have to have a hat to paint this painting? Yes. You must have a hat. No, of course not. But don't you want a hat? I want a hat, and I'm wearing a hat. I'm oh. going to put some breaks on yeah. my canvas. See, I've loaded my brush up on the edge with yep. that black. Yep. And I'm going to come down about a third of the canvas from the bottom. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to make a slightly horizontal line here. I am... Grab a little brown, a little white, a little more medium there. and Which brush are you using? This is a number 10 bright. This particular brush is a Robert Simmons. Uh-huh. Um, it is not as stiff as Goldilocks, but it is a very well-made brush. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a nice performance brush. I would certainly say it's better than even the Creative Marks. Yeah. Yeah. And this one has a lifetime guarantee, which I think is crazy to do on acrylic brushes, but, you know, it's their business. <laughs> <laughs> I had an acrylic brush business. I certainly wouldn't do that, but <laughs> maybe nobody paints there. I don't know. We'll find out. Abandoned. Don't tell them. It, it probably voids the guarantee. <laughs> so I've got this nice brownish black horizontal. Isn't that a moody sky? Yeah. This is a this is a very European sky. This is weather. This is the kind of uh, weather that you know werewolves hunt in. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why she's running. Le Pac de Loup. Oh, that was a good movie. It was. And now I've gone dorky oh, in another country. <laughs> <laughs> Let's dork out in every country. Oh my goodness. I can't believe we got 300 people. Oh my gosh. We're having a little stream problem. No. We are. That's not okay. No. We'll do what we can here. If there's any if there's any problems then what we'll do is we'll re uh, re-upload it right afterwards. Yeah. You so. will always get your painting lesson no matter what. Yeah. Yeah, so if there's any issues here, we'll just we'll just re-upload this right afterwards. Yeah. You never have to worry. So I'm going to make some more streakies down here. I'm going to have them be a little darker and browner than up top. Okay. Hopefully somebody gets to see it. Oh, yeah. No, it's just, there was just a little bit of glitchiness there. Was there? Yeah, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on it. We're going to do what we can to keep it. Uh, we got to get that second thing. Well, it's it's a complicated thing. We have to have multi routers. We have to multi. I know this is starting to be like a yacht. <laughs> <laughs> well, YouTube oh, channels are like a pet. They are. They're like a boat. They're a, they're a hole in the water. You throw money into. Do you know what I wish we could do? Hmm. I wish we could do like slow mo, like brown. It's like. You know what? That's I'm 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 working on that. With the, like with you just see all the bristles like going and hear them. And instant replay so slow mo. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm I'm working on that. I think that'd be uh, not because we, we need it, but isn't that just silly? No, no. I th I feel like I I I have been really inspired by a nail channel. Now I want to see the paint pour out of the tubes of paint. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like that's an option. 
How fun is that? So see, this is a little browner down here, and it gives us kind of a horizon line mm -hmm. and a landscape to relate to. Even though this is a very abstracted piece, mm -hmm. we're still getting a lot out of it. Right, so this is down here. Are we still up? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we are still Sherpa. We are Sherpa strong. We, we are Sherpa strong. Yeah, we they're so patient. 333 people out here with us. Wow. 333? Yeah. Did you say 333? 333. I feel like that deserves another dance and maybe a drink out of the Diet Demon. The Diet Demon. There's a Diet Demon. There you go. That's pretty awesome. It was pretty awesome as I go slurpy, slurpy, slurpy. <laughs> um. <laughs> you know, you, you know what's crazy is that, is that is the, I, 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 I think that we're gonna have four hundred people in the room Are here we? in no time. You know what's crazy? What's I that? need to uh, like blow dry. Blow dry. Oh no, you're gonna leave me alone out here. Yep. I'm, I'm gonna be. Oh gosh. I like to do this. Back from the canvas. Yeah, and, and I realize this is controversial, especially with my mom's position. Hope she doesn't blow a circuit breaker. Huh? Let's see if she blows the circuit breaker. <laughs> I guess not. All right, so I have successfully wired successfully wired the studio up so that we don't blow circuit breakers anymore, or at least today. So thank you guys for all coming and hanging out with us today. Um, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and um, especially the like button. We really, if you can hit the thumbs up there, we're trying to get to 300 so we can make the Sherpa dance. We like doing the double Sherpa dance where we hit 300 people and 300 likes in the room at the same time. It's our favorite thing to do. Um, it also helps to let YouTube know that you guys like what you see here. So, look, there she's back. And I didn't even have to get all the way through my nonsensical spiel. I'm going to show you guys a bunch of different methods for you at home to get these clouds in. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention, our store's open. And thank you for everything y'all have been getting. That's been yeah, real yeah. fun. And there's always new items in the store, so you have to check it out. Oh, yeah, there's some new ones in there I'm today. Put out some zinc white. Mixing white would also work. And I'm going to show you how to do this with a dry brush. Okay. I'm going to show you how to do this with glazing medium, and I'm going to show you how to do this with zinc. Mm. So you're covered on a couple things, right? So we need our first distant kind of clouds that are behind our Eiffel Tower. And so the first thing that I can do is pull out some titanium white and get it very... See how light how I push this around here? Uh -huh. I'm getting it very lightly on this brush. I'm going to come here and I'm going to make light little circles. And see how the painting underneath mm -hmm. is really effective. Another thing that might help you if you're having trouble... And I know sometimes it is hard for everybody, right? Yeah. Is if you draw your little cloud shape, your uneven shape in first before you try to scrumble. And I'll show you how this works. Right? So I want this really kind of crazy uneven little cloud shape. So I've got that there. If I was having trouble scrumbling that in, scrumbling being that hysterically fun, <laughs> scratchy scratch little motion... I could follow that pattern set and it might help me. Okay. Yeah. Now, another thing I can do that can help me is take glazing medium and I can mix as little white into the glazing medium as I like. Oops. And I can then glaze a very nice atmospheric little cloud and as I've come to the bottom I'm going to kind of soften it back and forth see that oh wow yeah and I'm going to take it out here and it's okay that sometimes it's just barely there in fact barely there is something that you want I'm going to start over here and just do this very light one mm -hmm. little bits of pigment a little bit going on you know barely barely there there are a ton of ways to accomplish I'm going to show you the zinc here, too. Let me get a little zinc. Maybe, like, right here. So, zinc is a bit like having glazing medium in your titanium white. It's not actually, that's not the formulation. This is actually made with zinc, and so it's more translucent, more see-through. 
Um, there is some concern among conservationists that zinc could craze over time, which is to crack. Interesting. But not in tiny, thin coats like this. It's much more likely to do it in thick applications. And I don't know why you'd be doing a thick application of zinc, <laughs> but you might have a reason that you were. So you might be worried about crazing. Do you see how that just creates this just... I do. Airy, fairy. You can even get a little brown or black into this and then add some white to it so it's not perfectly white and get some glazing medium going. I'm going to come over here. So I, I, I've been very good. Like moments after I mentioned it last time, we hit double Sherpa. We hit double Sherpa? Oh, we, we've been double Sherpa for a while. I've just been having to let you do the painting. So, because it's, we have such an awesome community. We're now at three, we have 300, over 350 people in the room. We are and, Sherpa! And over 325 likes. So, it's, if we get 300 subscribers today, do you know what they get? What do they get? If we get 300 people in a live with 300 likes, and on that day I uptake 300 subscribers, mm. you get a limited edition We Are Sherpa shirt. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm going to release it in store. I'm going to okay. design something custom and put it up, and it'll be really funny and dorky and goofy. Okay. Well, I, I don't, don't know, know that what anybody that is. wants that. <laughs> yeah, I do. I don't, don't do know. <laughs> so, I'm going to do some cool graphic, and I'll do a spoof on the movie poster, and yeah. it'll be so funny. Oh, yeah. So see how oh, I'm creating these awesome. distant clouds right here, and I'm scrambling, scrambling, scrambling. Scrumbling. Oh, up there. I like scrumbling. And here's the trick. Like, again, if you're having trouble keeping your cloud lines, draw them in. Oh, yeah. Chalk them in. You could be like, I don't know. Some clouds need to do some of this stuff. Right? And then you can just follow that in. Lots of ways to get control over what you have going on here. Right. Hmm. Maybe you want to come here and get a little brown and a little black and come add some shadow to this cloud. It's stormier than maybe you originally thought. That's okay. Be stormier. Be stormy. And if it gets too stormy, guess what? Go back with a little more white and a glaze. You can constantly, constantly, constantly be talking to your clouds. My mom had one painting. I swear she changed the sky 20 times over a course of several years. It was so weird. Now, let's see here. It appears you're using a soft brush for your clouds. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, she was just missing. She had missed the description about the cloud, uh, your brush. So. Yeah. So... Yeah, at the beginning of this, we have a description. We talk about the brushes. We're talking about the materials, but basically yeah. you want a nice round like this, short bristles, shorter bristled, mm -hmm. right? You want the shortest one in the store that you get that has the hog's bristles, and that is a generally good cloud. Mm -hmm. so now, my issue with my Eiffel Tower, as I come over here to put it in, is generally my vertical line. So I'm going to say in the like left third of the painting... But with at least, oh gosh, you know, a little space. Like, I need to, like, leave a little space. Maybe I'll put a mark over it two inches. Because I need to have a little room. I need to put my Eiffel Tower in. And the first thing that always messes me up and cracks John up is that my towers tend to lean. They do. Yeah, the so lean I'm going to chalk in a vertical line <laughs> so that my tower don't lean so much. Now, your, your Eiffel Tower... Uh, hopefully you can see this chalk as I chalk it in. And I, I bet you Angela is going to have a really brilliant way she explains drawing <laughs> it. Right? Has got to have two feet that come off the tower. Uh, yep. So at about the halfway point of this structure, I'm going to descend two arcing out lines. Can you see that? Yep. So I'm like, all right, that feels eiffel enough for me. <laughs> So I'm going to put a one-inch foot down at the bottom of both of those. Right? They and then maybe even. in halfway distance of this curve, I'm going to add another little horizontal line. That's the observation duck. Where all the curves bisect, that's another observation duck. And then way up here is another observation duck. See how that almost like bisects it in like goes half to half there? 
So that's helpful. I can then draw my arch in underneath and blend. That's crazy thick. Not that thick. <laughs> but blend my little eiffel -y tower lines up here and then make sure I have a nice descending blend here and then a spike at the top. Super easy. Super. Super. Guess what's also okay? What is? Uh, tracing an Eiffel Tower on or stenciling it on. Oh, yeah. Also <laughs> totally okay. Okay, drawing should not be your limitation. Drawing should not be your limitation. In the description, yes. I have the painting. I have a traceable. You don't need to draw. No. Oh, this is this is some awesome. We're double so three sixty. What? We're double three sixty. Oh my gosh! I don't even know what that is. Do two spins. Actually, you have to you have to spin around a couple times. I'm you know I'm wired into mics. I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> I have a leash. And look, it's all around my leg. <laughs> now she's spun up like a top. My shoes match. I, you're, that's such a non sequitur. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Upsetting people around the world. Uh, that was like a culturally inappropriate <laughs> thing to do a whole bunch of places. Spin around? No, show your shoes. I don't think anybody cares. Well, we'll shoes. find out. All right. So now I'm taking this black and brown with a little bit of glaze. And I'm going to paint these structural supports going up. And they're in kind of a black and brown because they're off in the distance. It's a foggy day and the lights aren't on. You're going to have to say, ha, ha, Flame's back. Flame is back. Are you okay, sweetie? We put she, a wish in for you. She, she seems to be okay in here. She's She seems cheery. I like a cheery flame. And I see all my other wonderful moderators. I see Ghost, and I see Mona, and I saw, uh, I see, I see Stephanie. And earlier I saw uh, Al uh, Alan in here. We're goofing off, and, and Angela's been hanging out the entire time. Oh, hi, Angela. And Angela's got a really cool, and again... You know how Angela always has a great way of explaining how to do something. So chances are, if you're not really feeling my Eiffel Tower, go watch hers. <laughs> <laughs> and then put her tower in. Because her tower is a little more architectu architecturally correct. Mine is very painterly. Mm. That's what we do. And I just paint that little arch in. And it feels sort of Eiffel Tower-y, kind of. Yeah. You know? Need an observation deck right here. Oh, look. There's Mark, too. I see Mark. Hi, Mark. There's Mark, so zombie Mark? And, and Janine's out here. Actually, I, I, I have not seen zombie Mark. He may be snoozing with his kitty cat. So see how it's kind of just a glazy, diff, like, far away little tower? Yeah. Yeah. Super easy. And all we got to do now is get a small detail brush, like an example would be this number two, mm -hmm. bright, from Simply Simmons. I'm going to get some black paint out. I'll add just enough water to it to make it a little more fluid. In other words, not as heavy body. Mm -hmm. If you're painting with student paints or soft body paints, you don't have to do that step. <laughs> and look, I think we have all of our moderators. because I see Maricha and I see Donna, too. No way Maricha's here. here. I don't believe you that Maricha's here. That turns me out. Hi, Marisha. Even Honor's here. Hi, Honor. How are you doing? Just everybody. Honor finds the most interesting things on the internet. She does. Stephanie does, too. We've mm -hmm. had some interesting discoveries. Kevin, the kite. And, and I was looking at... Uh, so I'm going to do little X's. These little X's up my tower mm -hmm. to say that there's girders. Just little X's. It's just a little textural paint. And then where I have observation deck, maybe I'll kind of define that a little more. Say more observational. I pray my tower is not weeping over. Because sometimes they do weep over a little bit. <laughs> it's a sad tower. It's a sad tower. Poor tower. Just X up this side too. X up? Little X's. So you go X. I do. Just a little decorative textural painting. Soft, distant, far away. You wouldn't really see the detail. Nice little observation deck. Nice little observation deck. 
And even though these are going to be behind clouds, they're going to show a little bit and having the detail will matter. It's just a weird thing you might not know. I got that coming up here. I'm so excited. I hope everyone is going to go right to Angela's after. Oh, yeah. You can always paint or straighten things out by going back and just coming along with the background color. See? I can straighten that out. You can even add a little see-through, peek-through. So whatever you need to do, straighten out your tower. Do it. Do it. Because mine gets so like tipped over. Back into my cool brush. Back into my cool brush. Now I have to start putting some fog down here. So I'm going to get a little black and white. And a lot of glazing medium. And I'm going to start adding this fog and I'm gonna just make sure I break up my shapes you know you could do zinc right here it's a great one to do let the tower sort of peek through mm. and I'm going to just make sure that it's fuck it. who's fuck I this brush is so battered. I gotta find another one of these. We'll have to go on a brush safari and be like, do a will it cloud? <laughs> will it cloud? Will it cloud? That's this great. brush, will it cloud? Walmart, will any of these brushes cloud? Hell, I don't know how long any of these places will let me go inside them. <laughs> oh, well, I'm gonna say thank you to Georgia who put a wish on their, on her canvas for Andrea being an awesome light keeper. Thank you. You guys are great, great, great light keepers. Yeah. You can pull some more white. And then you create this highlight. See how it goes? Top of this. You can be like, oh, no, it's this one here. Go back and forth, see? Creating this, like, atmosphere. Yeah. It's just crazy here. And I'm going to get a little more brown and a little more black and some white. I'm going to make a darker cloud up here. And the reason being is, is that I know I've got my girl maybe placing her here. And her skin is very light. And when I did my test design, I found um, I needed a darker cloud to put her next to. So her light, light skin stood out. I'm scrambling, pigments on the brush. Just enjoying creating that atmosphere. Now a neat, neat thing we can do, get some just white, glazing medium, even sink. Let's come here and say that there's some cloudiness traveling in front of the Eiffel Tower. Look at that. What's that? What's that? That was me moving fast. <laughs> For some reason I had a momentary panic attack. There were bats in the house, but I couldn't tell you why. <laughs> Do you ever have that where you're like, you get an no. a weird idea like, oh, it's bats, but that makes no sense why you're thinking it would be bats? Uh, no. No. Okay, fine. So, so your lack of imagination, that's what I'm I think say. I lack imagination. <laughs> I don't, I t I'm completely lacking in that department. See, I'm putting this cloud in front of this okay, tower. I'm supposed to zoom in on the clouds. Yeah, so see, like, you know, the cloud is in front of the tower and that helps I'll layer zoom in. what's happening here. And you want to layer. It doesn't hurt. This is hard, and that's why we're going to have a cloud quest. But it's also really easy. Super easy once you get it. And it's one of the great joys. And you can be like, because you can be like, oh, make uh, a little light I one can, up here. It's so far away, you can barely see them. You have to slow down when you're moving around so I can okay. stay on them. So one of the things I'll do is I'll push my little cloud up. I'll push up. Do you guys remember this from Bob? And he comes down, and then at the bottom, I blend him out back and forth. See? Yeah. And it's just distantly there. How fun is that? I don't uh, know. Real fun for me. I'm going to take a look around at some of these other clouds real quick. What? I'm just going to stay. If you can lean over there, I'm going to take a look at some of the clouds for everyone so they can. Okay. I'm going to sippy sip. Kind of see what's going on here. They're just a wonderful, scrumbly, hot mess when you get up, up close on them. But when you get away from them. Oops, sorry. 
Right. They become the clouds. Let's see, look a little look around there. All right. Me? Thank you. And then when you get that far back, look how cloudy they look. Yeah. How is that possible? I don't know what it is. So, this is a great time. Traceable ends on Pinterest, and mm -hmm. there's one on Facebook. All right. You see, so you can do the traceable. It can be hard to trace over acrylic paint when it's dry, so be you be sure and use like something that's got like, a nice graphite that will transfer right on your canvas. We've had a whole quest about that. Now I'm going to do a quick gesture sketch. Okay. When I'm sketching her in, and I sketch in in paint. I have two, and I'm going to try to create the curve that is her back to waist. The top of all of this. I'm going to place her little head. <laughs> and that is generally a slim oval. I'm only explaining this because somebody was like, how do you do that? So I'm talking through how I just freehand her in. Mm -hmm. Now along this front line, I need her face to divot in at the eye, come out for the cheek, down to the jaw, scoop up pretty sharply. And then there's an ear right here, which the hair will help me define. That, believe it or not, is her face line. Oh. And she may need adjustment. So that's why it's great that it's easy to paint things out if they don't work. Nice long neck. Can anyone guess who my muse was for this? My mom totally guessed it. Hmm. And I'm literally just using yeah. the white paint that I have there. Um, it has a little brown in it, so it goes off white. See how that does that? Yeah. And that way you can put, uh, you could also do a little black into it. So you can put her skin up back white when you want to. Okay. Now I'm going to pull down to the shoulder. And I'm going to make a little shoulder. Super fun thing for me to do. Just start painting the torso down. It's crazy, and I might do a step-by-step -step of drawing her. Mm -hmm. You know, this one is, I'm kind of familiar with how she comes in. So everybody was guessing Audrey Hepburn? Yeah. Totally Audrey Hepburn was the basis for this painting. So I've got a nice long neck. I need to make sure that I have enough of a back here. So I'm thinking that out. I'm letting it get quite narrow at the waist. And the waist is kind of coming into the horizon line here. And one thing that I know is that wherever I have put her waist is where I've got to bend her elbow. Mm -hmm. So wherever her waist is, that's the bend of her elbow. I'm going to just put a little breast line in there. That will get defined by the red dress. And then we know the dress is going to come off here and come out over here, almost past the halfway point, this little ball gown goes. Then I know, oh, I've got that bell. Yeah. Right? So I'm going to just sketch in with my paint the arm at the elbow joint. I know that I thicken the arm back up again and then taper it back down to where the hand will be. All right? And again, all of this is in the traceable, so you don't even have to, you know, futz with this the way I'm going to have to futz with this. Because mm -hmm. I'm just free it in and in paint. Because <laughs> I do crazy things like that. I'm going to bend a nice little delicate hand here that's catching her dress. And I'm going to get a smaller um, brush when I go to define that hand in. So I'm going to paint in her arm at least to where I know the glove begins. All right? Mm -hmm. Make sure her back has got a nice coat of this sort of off-white paint. And... 
that she's very light though. Because the white of her skin is actually the white of the French flag. It's a weird thing. I don't know what to explain to you. I swear I went with it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to get my detail out. Can you guys okay. see how detailed this is? Uh, I can this is mm. a number one round by Creative Mark. Okay. So it's very small. If you want a really small one in the Simply Simmons, switch to short handled. Interesting. And that's when their brushes get smaller. But that's not universally true for every, you know, brush company. And that's been the problem about, you know, sharing stuff with brushes. Is you really have to be familiar with, like, a lot of product lines yeah. to know what to even tell people. And then a lot of times it's what to look for because it's not the most expensive brush. It's a brush with the correct properties for the job. That's really all it is. So I'm going to do some fingers that are together. And then I do want to have a little pinky come out, kind of capturing the dress. Maybe she has a forefinger right there. You have to remember to breathe. 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 Yeah, I know. This hand thing is hard. The hand thing can be hard. What I try to remember is the length of the fingers, the digits, and to keep them quite delicate. Uh huh. And so I remember the pinky will be the shortest, this middle finger is the longest, the ring finger down from it. So when I'm shaping things, I'll just be thinking about that. Those, how they relate to each other. Because sometimes if you just catch how they relate to each other, mm -hmm. it will convey the hand or the object beautifully. I'm going to paint this whole glove back black. Oh, cool. Whole glove just goes in black. That's all it takes. Just enjoy putting this glove in black. I'm hoping that she is, um, especially with the traceable, as easy as Hope's swing was. Oh, yeah. You know, which was has been a great home painting party, great first-time painter painting. You know. And maybe, 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 if you want... You can come here about midway up the hand and pull out the little indication of a thumb. But you don't have to have it. It's just it's nice that you can. And while I have my detail brush, I'm going to come to find a nice little hairline here. And since it's Audrey, we better put it in a bun <laughs> or a chignon. Right? I'm going to come around the ear. So there the ear is defined. Very teeny tiny little lash peeking out. Maybe some little tendrils of hair. Well, I've got this tiny brush wandering down. Tiny little brush wandering down. Little tendrils. Which is always nice. And I might pick up a slightly bigger brush. Oh, this filbert looks good to me. A number four filbert. And just paint in the hair here. I like this filbert and I picked it because it has a nice sharp edge. But it still has that rounded filbert at the tip. Filberts are different in brights than they're rounded at the tip. And this one is a Simply Simmons, and the other one was a Creative Mark? Yep. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Well, we all know the Creative Marks came into my life because that back-to-school, you know, summer sale that they do mm -hmm. at Jerry's Artorama, where they're like a dollar. Killer pricing. Yeah, but it's just, you know, that's just really good pricing. I don't really yeah. know what else to say, because that's really, really good pricing. And <laughs> so... <laughs> What does Filbert mean? Do you know? No, like not off the top of my head. I thought it was French for cat's tongue. I, it, it, it may be. <laughs> you know, I, I that's what I had thought. Now, I, I just, you know, that's obscure. Well, you spend more time talking to the satin silver people. Yeah, but, but I thought it was like cat's tongue or something so weird. So I put a dark line here. Yeah. And I'm going to get some blending medium and some pure white. 
and I'm going to just sort of blend that in to the back. I just want the spine shadow. See? Yeah. I'm blending medium. Just just something to start saying that's the back. I'm going to start grabbing just the pure white and coming just along the neck, but not all the way up to the chin. And then right across this broad part of the back right here. And maybe on the other side too. There, see so just that slight spine. And then on the front of the arm, just a slight highlight. Hmm. And then at the front of the cheeks. Well. What? So it would appear that I was I was right. It like Filbert is his tongue or cat's tongue there. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure which one it was. But you have to dance again, oh Sherpa, because we hit four hundred likes. No. Can you believe that? No, I don't. Uh huh. I'm gonna dance. Fortune I'm Sherpa. gonna drink from my diet demon and dance. Because it's a happy, happy dance. Gotta celebrate your wins. You do. You do. It's so important to do that. Yep. Also, I think that Filbert's a type of nut, is what someone It is also Zoe. a type of nut, yes. But has nothing, that does not have anything to do with why the brush is named. But it's named. Yeah. I'm gonna take a little of my red and black. Uh -huh. And I'm going to deepen this crimson with just a touch of black. I might even add some glazing medium to it so it's nice and fluid. But see how it's deepened with the black? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to very carefully, from under the armpit down to the implied spine, make a diagonal line and then come back up. Can you see the V? Oh, yeah. And then I'm going to paint here, catch that little lip to say that that's her bust, and there's your waist. Oh, wow. Fun stuff. Fun, fun stuff. And we'll have to say happy birthday to Lynn today. Happy birthday, Lynn. It's her birthday, so. That's fantastic. It's good to have a birthday. It is. It's better than the alternative. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be Art. hanging out with the Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> Ghostbusters. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. All right. So as I do her skirt, one thing that I'm going to do is you're going to notice that I do a brush direction like at the flow of her skirt. Mm. Does that make sense? It does. So I'm going to keep making sure I get enough black in here to deepen this red because I want to oh. put pure red on it and pop it. You don't? I do. Oh, you do? Okay. When I get to go with a pure crimson, pop it. I'm going to paint very, like, I'm going to leave a little spot around my hand and then come back with my detail brush. Mm-hmm. Right? Because I, uh, I just can't do that with this brush. You can't? I can't. I'm you... sure some people can, but I cannot. That's not that. And it's not that big a deal. And you don't need to be all things in art. No. No, that's not true. That's a lot of things people think. They think they have to be all things in art. Mm -hmm. But you don't. You just could be just some of the things in art. Or just one of the things. Or just one of the things. So I'm just letting this go. Now, I do want to cover, in this particular case, all the canvas underneath her red. Uh huh. So she's. we're going to paint out all that stuff underneath. Just to make sure. Don't add too much black tip. Uh -huh. Don't add too much black. Treat it like a chili pepper to your red. That's something that can happen. So too much black would be like this dark. Right next to it would be more ideal. You want to make take it more to a brick color than a clotted blood color. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Hopefully it's helpful. So if you've gotten it too dark, let it dry, mix closer to a brick, and paint over it. Ah. That's all you got to do to fix it. Interesting. Interesting. This dress should just pop off your canvas. It should be one of those pieces in your house where people go, oh, that's beautiful. Well, it is. 
It is, but that's that is the red does that. Yeah. So see how this isn't quite so dark. It's not. It is brick. Yeah. And I'm just making sure that my canvas underneath is covered. Okay. Here we go. Oof. Gonna make sure that this is covered. And just paint it around the hand. I don't think I can do that, John. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> No worries. <laughs> Just letting you know. It's oh, good to know. Go. <laughs> it's good to know. Just carefully painting around the hand because I don't want to lose all the detail I worked hard to put in. Yeah, this is a very interesting question. This one that I've asked in the past of you. Uh, why is it that you paint? You, you don't paint the hand in after the dress. <laughs> I can. You could. That, that, you choose that as part of your style. I just choose to do that. It's just how I choose to do that. Um, you can absolutely do it once the dress is painted in. Have and you, there would be nothing wrong with that. But you, you've done this because you like the, this style. Well, and also because it really helps me show like certain elements when I'm sketching or planning in. Gotcha. Because I'm freehanding her in in paint. I'm not tracing her on. Right. If I were tracing her on, I might consider putting the hand in after or, you know, changing up that work a bit. I'm going to make sure that there's a second coat of black on the gloves. The mm -hmm. glove reads is very, very black. If I need to do that on the hair, I'm going to do that. And just grab a little bit of white. And let's make sure. Add a little black to it. You don't want too white. And let's add a little highlight to her hair, just a little bit. Then take some, just this blue, this ultramarine blue that you're like, why is this here? Just for this one little bit. Oop. We're gonna go around the bun with the blue. This is what makes it the French colors. And add a couple ribbons going off. Just blowing in the wind there. Nice little highlight at the ribbon, maybe coming off these two. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to get a good mid-size bright if I can find one. There is one. Mm. This is a number eight. I'm going to get my just pure red. And I'm going to not paint out all this dark at the waist, but as I come out, I'm going to very lightly dry brush this red. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. But I want to leave some of this dark at the waist. Like it's the deep satin wrinkle. Right. And I'm just dry brushing this red right over her darker red. And see why it's important not to now get the red too dark. Mm hmm But you need to have it be darker so that the pure red pops. Just... Just enjoy that color. And then I'm going to come on our bodice. Just pull a little bit of it down. But I'll leave again some darkness at the waist. And you can go back in and get a little black if you need to redefine any of that. And you can take your brush on the edge and pull it in. See how I'm doing that? Yeah. Brush on the edge. So we haven't lost the shadows of this bright dress. Then just take the tip with some blue. Yeah. Come right here. Dab a little blue accent oh, to yeah. the back of her dress like little flowers. That and that's it. Wow. That's awesome. Dude. Well. We did it. And we had like double Sherpa. And now you're ready to go do Angela's. 
which is fantastic and would match this and make everyone think your apartment was the best thing you've ever, ever seen. This will be unlisted till it processes, and we're going to meet you over at Angela's at 2 o'clock. All right. Or whenever in the temporal YouTube time loop. We love you guys. We'll see you at the easel really soon. Uh, bye bye. <laughs>